Hello and welcome to the Hot Rod Bible Study where tonight we continue our study in the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 6. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to share with you a word that God placed upon my heart earlier this week when I was taking one of my early morning walks. And that word happens to be gratitude and how I am grateful to God for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon my family and me. And tonight, specifically, I am grateful to God for you and for your faithful attendance to the Hot Rod Bible Study, whether it be in person, whether it be via the internet, or even later on via a podcast, I am grateful to God for you. And it is my prayer that God wrap his loving arms around you and have you feel his presence this evening, whether you are in a season of want or a season of plenty, I pray that God make his presence known to you this evening. So God bless you. Before we begin, let's open with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word and our opportunity to study it. I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts and our minds to your word. I pray, Lord, that um, you also, as always, keep this knucklehead out of the way. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, over the last few in previous episodes, I have to say, uh, God has used our hero Hosea to show his people their unfaithfulness, their worshiping of foreign gods. Uh, tonight's episode, we have Hosea calling the people to repentance. And unfortunately, what we see in return is the people's uh, impenitent response. They, uh, they are not very penitent. They, they, they do not uh, uh, confess their wickedness. Okay, so let's begin. Verse 6, chapter 1, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord, for He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. O oh, Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O oh, Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and the early dew, and like the early dew, it goes away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But like men, they transgress the covenant. There they dwelt treacherously with me. Gilead is a city of evildoers and defiled with blood. And as bands of robbers lie in wait for a man, so the company of priests murder on the way to Shechem. Surely they commit lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the harlotry of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O oh Judah, harvest appointed for you when I return the captives of my people. And that's where we're going to stop. Now, tonight we are going to be referencing a lot of different scripture. Because remember, scripture interprets scripture. Okay. If you have somebody who is giving you some, their interpretation of Scripture and it doesn't add up with other Scripture, 
it's a false interpretation, okay? Beware. So remember, scripture interprets scripture, and that's why we'll be looking into extra scripture this evening. Okay, it again begins with verse one says, come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. That is just like a parent with their child, either with direction or correction. And none of us growing up like any bit of that at all. Uh, <laughs> most of the time the response is, it's just not fair. Haven't you heard little kids say that? Haven't you been the little kid who said that? I can remember when I was about, oh, eight or ten years old, and one of my chores was to go out and weed the parkway in front of the family business at Martin Garage. And I didn't much care for it. So I came in and I looked at my dad and I said, you know, there's child labor laws. You can imagine what his response was. Yes, uh, I don't think he ever laughed harder. I don't think the men that were with him <laughs> laughed any harder either. And I have a pretty good idea when my kids had uh, a similar uh, statement that I had a pretty good chuckle at their expense as well. Okay, but it's human nature. When God corrects us, we think it's not very fair. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us up. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. Verse 2 says, after two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we might live in his sight. Doesn't that remind you of something? Doesn't that remind you of something from the New Testament? Oh yeah, how about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the third day? raised up, be able to be and live in the sight at the right hand of God the Father. And just as it talks about us being torn and stricken, Jesus was stricken, smitten, and afflicted, as the old hymn says, for our transgressions. Okay, verse 3 says, Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let's get to know him. Uh, how do we do that? Well, it says here, Proverbs 1, verse 7, I quoted this last week, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay, how do we get to know God? Right here, through the scriptures. Uh, one of my uh, pastor mentors by the name of Phil Pledger would often say that we are to read Mark and inwardly digest the Word of God. Isn't that wonderful? Read it, mark it, get, get out your pen, get out your highlighter, whatever. Mark up, it's okay to mark in your Bible. If you underline something that helps you to re remember it, neato. This is what we're to do, read, mark, and inwardly digest, ruminate on God's Word. That's how we get to know Him. That's what we're doing tonight. <laughs> okay, it says, His going forth is established as in the morning. Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, but His compassions fail not. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Boy, reminds you of an old hymn again, doesn't it? Great is your faithfulness. Your compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. It goes on to say in verse 3, He will come to us like the rain. Okay, Job. Chapter 29, verse 23 says, They waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the spring rain. God comes to us in the morning as the rain. And he goes on like the latter and the former rain on the earth. Now, people during this time would really have an understanding the necessity of rain for crops. You know, strangely enough, 
They didn't have rain for rent. They didn't have the irrigation that is available to us today. They had to depend upon rain to water their crops. Uh, there's a note on here that I have from Charles Spurgeon. Imagine that. That says, notice again, it is a repeated gift. He shall give the former rain and the latter rain. If you have had grace once the Lord, once, pardon me, if you have had grace once, the Lord has more for you. Did you have happy times when so-and-so was your pastor? Well, so-and-so is dead, but God is not. Were you very much delighted when you used to sit in such and such a church in years gone by? And have you moved to the country now? Yes, but God has not moved. He is in the country as well as the town. Boy, this, this really speaks to my lovely bride Pam and me, because we, boy, we've been in some wonderful fellowships. Okay, now you tell me you had such happy times when you were young. Yes, but God is neither younger or older. Go to him, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you suppose that because you gave, because he gave you the former rain, that he has emptied the bottles from heaven? Isn't that a wonderful, isn't that a wonderful word picture? Empty the bottles of heaven. No, is the answer. Okay. Now we get to see the impenitence of Israel and Judah. Rats. Verse 4 says, O Ephraim, from the kingdom of the north, what shall I do to you? O Judah, the kingdom of the south, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew, it goes away. Another wonderful word picture. It's, it dissipates, okay? That, uh, actually, this past weekend, I was blessed to go on a hot rod run, and it was in the uh, hotel where we stayed, was down by the beach. And man, I'll tell you what, my car was really nice and wet that morning that we got up, which was great because it <laughs> kept me, I was able to clean it real easily because of all the dew on it. What happened later in the day? Dry. All that dew dissipated. And this is what God is saying through Hosea to the kingdom of the north in the kingdom of the south, that your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, like the dew of the morning, it dissipates. You are not very faithful. Okay, verse 5 says, Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. Now you've heard of that. A lot of times we refer to that. If we're looking at, um, let's say, some sort of fence or something like that, where there is a rough hewn wood on it, being uh, cut with either a chisel or an axe. Okay, this is, this is a rough cut, okay? I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them with the words of my mouth. And it goes on to say, and your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Boy, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, man, I've heard that somewhere before. Well, again, Scripture interprets Scripture. So let's turn to Matthew chapter, where did I go? Chapter 9. And uh, this is starting in verse 10. We're going to go 10 to 13. Now, it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners, you and me, came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what it, this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. How about that? Jesus, God incarnate, is quoting Hosea. Jesus, 
the author of the book is quoting the book. Isn't that something? Same thing, uh, Matthew 12, verse 7, it says, get to the right page, it says here again, but if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus is quoting scripture. What does that say to us? Well, we need to have scripture on our hearts so as we too can quote scripture. Here's, here's the great, this is the great one. Okay, this is Matthew chapter four. And um, actually, if, if, you, uh, if you'd like to look at this later, write this down, this is neat, because what this is, is about Satan tempting Jesus. Okay, now it, I'll just, just a little point of it. Uh, starting at verse five, it says, then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Notice, that's Satan quoting scripture. What does Jesus say? Jesus says to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. When somebody is quoting scripture to you to have you do something that isn't, isn't, again, isn't interpreted by scripture, be ready have it on your heart. Have the scripture. You know what? When you're in God's word, this scripture will come to mind when necessary. And that's why we do this. That's why we're here. That's just so cool because God places that scripture that we've been studying, that we read, mark, and inwardly digest on our hearts. So when we got some knucklehead like Satan was tempting Jesus and quoting scripture, what did Jesus do? Straighten them out by quoting scripture. Ta-da! Pretty cool. When God incarnate his self, quotes scripture, I guess that means we ought to be prepared to do that too. Okay, now, and it goes on to say, besides, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, it goes on to say, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Going back to verse three, it says, let us pursue, pursue the knowledge of of the Lord. Okay? This is what God desires. God desires mercy. God desires this more than animal sacrifice. Okay? Which was a thing that was going on in the day. What he wants is mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Ta-da! Okay. Verse 7 says, But like men they transgress the covenant. There they dwelt treacherously with me. Gilead is a city of evildoers and defiled with blood. Um, Gilead was a hill of testimony, uh, which was a city of refuge. Um, interestingly enough, I have a niece that, that met her husband at a Christian camp called Mount Gilead, which is up in, in uh, Northern California. And again, it is the hill of testimony, a city of refuge. Now, why is, why is Hosea saying that it is a city of evildoers and defiled with blood? Well, he goes on to say in, chap, in verse 9, he goes on to say, As bands of robbers lie in wait for a man, so the company of priests murder on the way to Shechem. Shechem again was a city of refuge. What it is, is that these priests, the company of priests, murder on the way, right? These priests turn these places of God into places of pagan sacrifices. Can you, well, again, 9-11 uh, we just remembered here. 20 years. And we know that it was a terrorist attack. 
Uh, it certainly wasn't Christian guys doing this. And there was a period of time when they wanted to erect a mosque on that site. Well, that's what Muslim people do in places where they have conquered, such as the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. This temple that we just referred to, where Satan took, him, took Jesus up to the top of the temple. Well, that's it. They're in Jerusalem. Okay. We watch the same thing going on today. This, is, this still goes on. It goes on to say that surely they commit lewdness. Remember, throughout Hosea, Hosea, our hero, remember God had Hosea marry a hooker. <laughs> That's just what it is. All right, things started doing going okay, had a, three kids. Then she sold herself back off as a, select, a sex slave. And God said, well, guess what, Hosea? You got to go buy Gomer back. <laughs> tough, tough, tough sermon illustrations, right? Okay, they commit lewdness. Again, all throughout Hosea, it compares people of God's uh, unfaithfulness to him and faithfulness to other foreign gods as harlotry. And there was indeed harlotry going on in that. Okay, surely they commit lewdness. Verse 10 says, I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is harlotry in Ephraim. Uh, the Message Bible puts it this way. This is something I, 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 I look through when I'm preparing. I like to look through various uh, uh, yeah, interpretations. That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, anyway, uh, rats. Well, versions, pardon me. Yes, uh, different. Uh, man, I hate it. You know, this, this getting old stuff is for the birds. But anyway, so I, I'm looking at a uh, parallel Bible that gives me these different versions. Okay, these, these different... Um, <sighs> Man, and it's an easy word, and it just isn't there. Well, anyway, the Message Bible has one here. Unfortunately, it, it, throughout Hosea, it's kind of, to me, the Message Bible is a little bit crude in this, but maybe that's what we need. Because it says here, it refers to the harlotry of Ephraim as a spiritual whorehouse. Well, I guess that's, that's a, a, a pretty plain... Uh, uh, illustration there uh, it says Israel is defiled. Verse eleven goes on to say also Judah, that's that kingdom to the south. A harvest is appointed for you, a time of reaping. When I return to captives of my people, let's let's look at Galatians chapter six. 6 verse 10, where it says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, right, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. There is, we've always, you know, you hear that saying, well, what you reap, you'll sow. Well, that's what Paul was saying in his letter to the Galatians. It says, and I will return the captives of my people. This pretty much re refers to the Babylonian exile, which will happen approximately 150 years after this is written. They, <laughs> gee, 
You think they were warned with plenty of, they think they had plenty of warning, 150 years? Well, anyway, uh, and then it would probably last, the, the Babylonian exile lasted well, somewhere around 60 years. Uh, but God did bring them back into the land. So that's hope for us. When we goof up, when we commit harlotry with foreign gods, oh, Willie, I would never do that. Well, again, Anything that comes between you and God is an idol, whether it be your house, your spouse, your hot rod, your motorcycle, whatever it is, if it comes between you and God, that becomes, oh, another big one, money. That becomes an idol. Don't allow it. Okay, that's what we have for you tonight. Uh, I have to ask for any questions, comments, or smart aleck remarks. Uh, I'm being blessed without having you those right here, right now. Again, uh, if you do have anything like that, questions, comments, even smart aleck remarks, uh, you can uh, get me through Messenger on Facebook, or you can get a hold of me through info at hotrodbiblestudy.com. And I... I uh, I, I'm open to all of that because, it, again, it is my desire that everybody within the sound of my voice come to know Jesus in a mighty way and surrender to him. So now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. <music>